everyone, and welcome to our week eight edition of Friday Football Fever. I'm Ryan Bailey, and on tonight's show, we've got the Mustangs looking for their first district win of the season. Plus, Hebronville and Bruni trying to stay perfect in their districts, and of course, our latest player of the week. But first, we start with our game of the night over at the SAC as Alexander looked to jump back in the district championship mix. The Bulldogs coming off a loss to United South. Welcome to District Round Beat Eagle Pass to the Gateway City. Pick this one up early on in the first quarter. Alexander on the move with their opening drive. Going to get a little dump off pass to Gael Rodriguez. Trying to pick his way through the defense. Moving those chains. Get the first down. The drive going to end up stalling out on the Bulldogs. Bringing the field goal unit out. Mauricio Lopez from 28 yards. He makes it with ease. Had plenty on that one. Alexander getting on the board first. On the ensuing drive, the Eagles moving the ball down the field. The Bulldogs coming up with a big play. The Riley Puig was sacked. A big play for the Alexander defense. They'll put the Eagles in third and long, and the ball sails on the Eagles QB. Dylan Atheridge in the perfect spot. We're headed the other way with the turnover. Alexander, though, can't make the, the turnover pay off. Into the second quarter we go. Eagle pass on the drive. Third and long, a quick hitter to Dakota Kiropas. Making the first man miss down inside the one. They punch it in on the very next play. They get 7-3 Eagles with the lead. Well, the Bulldogs need to respond on offense, and they get the defense to jump off sides. That's going to give them a free play. Javi Jimenez, check out this dime. Dropping in Nathan Hossel. The big play, Alexander offense in business. Well, later in the drive, the Bulldogs facing fourth and long. Jimenez going to move up in the pocket, letting this one go down the field, connected with who else? Hossel getting behind the defense to haul it in. Alexander jumping back out in front, making a 10-7 game. Those feelings don't last long, though. The Eagles able to punch in a score with less than a minute to go in the half to regain the lead into the break. Both teams able to find the end zone in the second 24 minutes. But that leaves Alexander on the wrong end of a 21-16 final. Next up, we head over to Shirley Field. The Mustangs taking on Del Rio tonight. Nixon still in search of their first district win, taking on a Rams team that hasn't looked as good in years past. First snap of on offense for the home team. How's this for a start? Nixon faking out our camera guy then, Hernando Ruiz. Breaking into the clear with the rock. Now it's just a foot race, and he's got the head start. 96 yards for the score. Nixon going up 7 to nothing. Well, the Rams, they've got an explosive offense of their own. They can score from just about anywhere and just three plays into the drive. Zach Taylor, the QB, connecting with Luis Galadas. Then no one on the back end for the stop. 77 yards later, running away from the Mustangs and our camera guy. Just like that, we are all knotted up at seven. Nixon saying, enough with the big plays. Time to do what we do best. That's go to the ground and pound. Some tough running. Ruiz picking up a chuggy yards here and, and moving those sticks. Then the QB keeper, Antonio Calderon, he's going to get banged around here. But getting this ball down deep inside the red zone. A few plays later. They're close to the score. Calderon calling his own number going airborne this time. Horizontal for the score. Nixon back out in front by seven, but that Rams big play offense proving too much tonight. They get a 98-yard and 99-yard scoring run from Taylor. They come back to win it 46-28 over Nixon. We're just getting started here on Friday Football Fever. When we get back, it's time to head out of town. More highlights and scores, including Hebronville trying to remain perfect. Stick around. That's coming up after the break. Well, in our area, there's only one team left without a loss on their record. And for that, we head over to Hebronville. The Longhorns at home tonight taking on Skidmore Tynan. The Longhorns coming in a perfect 7-0. The Bobcats still in the playoff mix from the district. First try for the home team. They're making quick work of Skidmore here. The play action pass. Quick toss to Eden Perez. He's going to get the sideline in front of him. Just going to get chased down inside the red zone. And Hebronville got a little something cooking early on. From there, they're going to the ground. Brandon Salazar taking some hits and delivering some punishment here. He's going to get down to about the one-yard line. He'd punch it in on the next play, making it a 7 nothing Hebronville lead. Well, the Bobcats not phased at all. They're going to the air. Sonny, man, dunking under the defense, then letting it fly. Check out the subtle little push-off by the receiver, getting some separation. The PAT, though, is no good. Hebronville holding on to a one-point edge. On the ensuing drive, the Longhorns showing off a little bit of their passing game. Nate Garza over the middle in traffic. A nice snag from Sammy Cat Cadena to move the chains. But when it's time to punch it in, who else? The big man. Give him the ball. Get out of his way. Sal's are in from a few yards out. Make a 14-6 Hebronville on top. This one stays close for a little bit, but it's the Longhorns. They come over with a 43-12 victory. They have a massive matchup next week looming with fellow unbeaten Odom. 
Checking out more scores tonight. Up in Eagle Pass, another tough go for the Martin Tigers. They fall 47 to 12 to the Mavericks. Martin still looking for that elusive first win on the season. Over in the Austin area, St. Augustine hits the road to take on the Texas School of Death. And they are the defending state champions and showing why tonight. They come out with a big way, topping the Knights, do the Panthers 62 to 12. That one never really in doubt. And how about Bruni? They add to their winning record. Seven to nothing the final there, though. We are being told that was a forfeit by Benavides. So that's why Bruni only putting up seven points tonight. They got a better offense than that. As uh, they pick up a nice win, they remain unbeaten in district play as well. It's that time of the show where we get to take a step back and honor the best of the best from the previous weekend. For our, the first time this season, we go to United High School as our latest player of the week is Axel Chavez. The sophomore quarterback slung the ball for 276 yards and four touchdowns to four different receivers last week, averaging better than 16 yards of completion. Well, those numbers helped the Longhorns top Del Rio 34 to 14, picking up their long-awaited first win of the season. Andrews have hit the Longhorns this year, and Coach says it's been a baptism by fire for Chavez. Well, the young man is happy to share this with his teammates. I've been enjoying this my whole, my, uh, my whole childhood, coming in, ball boy, for like since like six years. This feels good being in a and just happy, just happy for the teammates. Tonight. Young man that we've thrown in the fire, little sophomore uh, quarterback, and, uh, you know, obviously he's still, still growing, still learning, but uh, we feel like he's going to be an exceptional athlete, exceptional quarterback, and and a great leader for this team. Congratulations to Chavez and the rest of the Longhorns on winning this award. Be sure to tune in every Friday night as we get the chance to honor the best of the best from the previous weekend. We aren't quite done here with Friday Football Fever. When we get back, the weekend kicked off last night with an all Laredo battle. Those highlights coming up next. Thursday night opened up the high school football weekend with a pair of USC teams battling it out over the sack. United coming off their first win of the season, looking to make it two in a row while LBJ fresh off their bye. Figures were up in the second play of the game. The Wolves to the air. Check out the concentration by Alejandro Salazar. Off the knee pad. Looks like it's a pick six, but an inadvertent whistle going to blow this play dead. They're going to bring it back. It would take more than a few plays, but United right on the doorstep of the end zone. Axel Chavez behind his big offensive line. Make it 7 nothing United. Well, after a quick LBJ drive, United with the ball back near the end zone. This time, Steve Loring off the left side. Will ground and pound. He's going to get in. 14 nothing horns just like that. Well, the ensuing drive, the Wolves need to get something going, and they do just that here. Raul Cantu to the air, dropping this one in. J.J. Diaz, a nice connection, and we're going to move the sticks. A few plays later, LBJ up around midfield, and this one not going to go as well. Cantu unloading, and Derek Gonzalez ready for it. They're coming down with the interception. We're headed the other direction. Into the second quarter, the Wolves' defense being tossed back out on the field. United to the ground game. Roy Randhell bursting through the tackle in the backfield for a loss for LBJ. A few plays later, though, it's a different story. Frank Soto not going to be stopped this time. Getting the edge, picking up a nice downfield block here. No one going to catch it. 56 yards later, it's 21-0 United. The Longwoods would add another score just before the half lead at 28 to nothing on homecoming night. It's United gives those fans coming home a little something to be happy about. They win it 42. Two to seven. LBJ still looking for that first district win. Well, this is typically the part of the show where we like to highlight one of our local bands, but tonight a little different. Instead, we want to shout out all seven of our 6A and 5A marching bands as they get ready for the big UIL competition coming up tomorrow. The fun will get started over the Student Activity Complex at 10 a.m. with Martin kicking off the festivities. It'll be followed up by Sigarella, United, LBJ, Alexander, Nixon, and United South in that order every 15 minutes. We want to wish all the teams the best of luck tomorrow as you take over the sack. Well, before we get out of here, time to crown our latest King of the Mountain play of the week, and we head over to Bruni. The Badgers, Albert Esquivel here. This, the four, one of his four touchdown runs last week as they come out in big droves. The Twitter polls were both very close, but it was Facebook where the Badgers pulled away, voting for their guy Esquivel as he dethrones Jacob Lozano from Cigarro, the two-time winner. Esquivel will now move on to take on the best play from this weekend. That'll be... Poll open up later on this week. You can vote on that coming up later on. Well, once again, Alexander suffers a tough loss to Eagle Pass. 
LB, or excuse me, Nixon goes down to Del Rio, while Heavenville, they remain perfect over at home. They've got a big one looming next week, as does Bruni. Well, that's going to do it for us here on this Friday night. We hope you guys have a great weekend. We'll see you back here with Friday Football Fever next week.